that he was. He himself says, One day I lost my slippers. Someone took my shoes. For six months I did not have to buy another pair of shoes because there was no need for me to leave my madrasa in the masjid. I didn't have to walk out of that place. Six months there was no need for me to put shoes on. A person... Who says, never in my life, with the exception of once, with the exception of once, never in my life I did any trade. I never bought anything in, in my life. Never went to the marketplace to buy anything. And that is that once also was for the wife of my Sheikh, Harat Sahar and Puri Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Another person who never and this is something for us, who would never keep money in his pocket, never keep money in his possession. And some of us, we say, we may say, I do the same, because you carry credit cards. And he wouldn't even carry those, we know that for sure. Zuhud fit dunya. Not having any love for this dunya. Not having any concern of what we get and what we lose, or lose of this dunya. The main concern of the life is how can we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we bring the whole world towards the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remember. And really it's something. Some of you, more many of you may have seen that scene. For me as a child, when I look, I think of what I have seen and of what's happening in the world at this time. There is nothing for me that, except to think that there is Allah that is doing all of these things. And that is, I remember in my childhood, seeing my father, all my uncles, everyone else that comes over there, they are so humbling themselves in front of this man that's sitting on a wheelchair. A man sits in a small room in Medina Munawwara. He cannot walk by himself. He cannot eat by himself. He cannot put his dress on by himself. He cannot make wudu by himself. He needs someone to assist him in all of these things and everything else that he needs to be done. Lower half of the body is paralyzed. Never gives a lecture. Never gives a talk. Whenever he's asked to give talk, he just say a few words of Nasiha and that's the end of the story. People are pushing him in a wheelchair. I look at that person. Then I go around the world. And whichever path of the world I go, I see people reading a book called Fada'il A'mal. Written by who? By that man that I have seen sitting on that wheelchair. Wherever, in whichever part of the world I go, I feel, I, I, face, I face and I meet ulama. I face muftiyan kiram. I meet mashayikh who are running great darul ulums, who are running great institutions, who are running great khanqa, who have, have, who have hundreds and some of them even thousands of students. Ask them, where did you get all of this from? They say, we are the students of Shaykh al-Hadith, Mawlana Zakariya, rahmatullahi alayhi. You go to England, you will find madaris that are established under the instruction of Shaykh al-Hadith, rahmatullahi alayhi. You come to this part of the world, madaris established under the instruction and by the orders and instructions of Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi and run by the students of Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi. Thousands of ulama without exaggeration and maybe hundreds of thousands of hafaz are becoming hafaz 
and they became ulama, they became muftiyan, just because of the teachings of that Shaykh al-Hadith, rahmatullahi alayhi. A person that I have seen sitting on a wheelchair, and he doesn't even give a talk, and he doesn't do anything, just sitting on that wheelchair there, and sitting on his bed in that room. What explanation do we have for this other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted that man? What other explanation do we have for it? And here we can see when Allah accepts someone, what type of work that person can perform. Few words. Mawlana so and so, you go to this part of the world and do the work. Ya Ya Hazrat, I can't do anything. He says, don't worry about it. I'm telling you, you just go. And he goes. And within some years, you see, hundreds of ulama being graduated over there through the teachings and instruction of this man that was sent by Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi. In this near past, we cannot really find any example similar to this. That a person will fill the world with knowledge. Not families, not individuals. Now you need to count, count uh, countries where the nur of Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi have been spread through his instructions and through his students. The only explanation is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the work of this man. Accepted the niyyah and ikhlas of this man. Accepted the deed and the ibadah of this man. And blessed him so much that he just goes somewhere. I get puzzled. We had so many flyers out and announcing Sheikh this and this is coming and that Sheikh is coming, that scholar is coming. And look at the number of people. And here we hear just one announcement that Sheikh al-Hadith al is coming from Medina Munawwara to spend Ramadan in his anger. And you see thousands of people are coming there. People who have never seen him before in, his li- in their lives. They are also coming. And they, don't, they know they are not going there to hear a lecture from him. All they would like to do is at least just have a look on him. And they think if we can have a look on him, we will be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something is forcing thousands of people. They're leaving their homes. I'm leaving. Where are you going? I'm going to spend their time with, in the stinger to spend time with Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi. What are you going to get? He doesn't even know what he's going to get. But he knows something is pushing him that go and spend time over there because there is a great man coming over there. What was pulling us to come over here at that time? What was making us go over there at that time? I'll give you a similar example to this during the month of Ramadan. Throughout the year we hear so many talks and lectures and so many ayahs and hadith about the virtue of Salat al-Tahajjad. Hardly we perform two rak'ah salah. But here the month of Ramadan comes, we find that we are standing for 20 rak'ahs behind the Imam and in 30 days we hear the whole Qur'an and sometimes some places even more than one Qur'an. What pushes us to go to the masajid at that time is that rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah had opened the doors of His mercy and blessings so much that everyone feels that He wants to go in. He doesn't want to miss the month of Ramadan. Similarly, we find with Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi, wherever he goes, thousands of people feel that the doors of the rahmah are open over there. Go over there and get your share of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same feeling. Not knowing what are we going to do over there. I'm not going there to heal lecture and if people just get an opportunity of shaking his hand or kissing his forehead, they feel that I got the greatest blessing in my life. A person who's millionaire, he looks at an, a person around him who has, who might have some millions, he looks at that person and looks down at him, that what this person values. He values nothing comparing to me, but he comes to this man that is sitting on a wheelchair, doesn't have a car, all he has a wheelchair that someone has to push it. When he shakes his hand with that man, the feelings of his life change. And now at this time, when his hands are in the hands of that man, he feels this dunya means nothing to me. I would like to really change and come to the deen of Allah. He have never heard a single word from him. All he sees that his hands are in the hands of that man. Just by putting our hands over there, the feelings, the current goes through that, and the feelings of the heart changes so much. Imagine what will be the situation of the heart of that person, of Shaykh al-Hadith, rahmatullahi alayhi. What might be his situation? 
that when you just touch 